First, uh, just let me say uh, up front uh, how envious I am of all of you young folks here that are aware of the concept of individual liberty at such an early age, because <laughs> the public education system certainly doesn't teach it. And uh, I myself did not become aware of the concept of individual liberty or that until my mid or late 30s. <clears throat> so I came to it a little bit late. Um, so I'm very envious that you get started at, at an early age to get, get to know what everything's about. Um, one other thing I'd say, when they put on the program, it says, uh, need a new nation, question mark. I didn't edit it very well because I didn't notice that. I would not have put a question mark on there. So to me, it's definitely needed. Um, I would say what I want to do here today is introduce you to a new organization called the Children of Liberty. And the name Children of Liberty comes from the group Sons of Liberty, which was the first group that was founded here that ended up revolting and seceding from the British government and overthrowing them and creating this nation that we're in today. I'll use my clicker here. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this right now, but I just want to throw the word up here, choice. And I'll circle back to it at the end of the presentation because I think everything end up, ends up coming back to individual choices and what choices people want to make. <clears throat> um, the other thing I really don't need to do in this group, and also one thing, maybe back up, I, I have not been to this conference before and I didn't realize how international it was, which is great because I think people... Uh, Outside the United States, I think, understand the concept of liberty really better than the people in the United States do because they've had to live through socialism or fascism or communism. I lived in Latin America for three years, and I've traveled all around Eastern and Central Europe, so I got to know the areas, and it's great this is an international conference. And if I'd have known that, I'd have probably designed this presentation a little bit different because this tends to be a little more... American focus, but the points survive nonetheless. But I don't have to spend a lot of time talking to you guys about the founding fathers and the founding of the country and the problems the federal government's created because you know about it or else you wouldn't be here and you're not part of this group because you don't know about it, you know about it. Um, and I do enjoy spelling the name of the country the way it was spelled in the Declaration of Independence with a united as an adjective, not a noun. Um, to me, I think it's clear the Founding Fathers believed strongly in libertarian ideas and this became the greatest example of what a libertarian society could become when they founded the nation. And the individual liberty to me was secured by five things. <clears throat> One, a constitutionally limited government. Two, free market capitalism. Sound money, an adversarial free press, and an individual right to bear arms. <clears throat> and the first four of those are gone. And they've been gone for quite a while now. The last one they'll take from you tomorrow if they could get away with it. So the federal government today, where, where is the federal government at today? To me, the federal government has totally not remained true to the founding principles of this country, the Constitution, and the Founding Fathers. And almost all the problems that the country faces today is because of this. And to me, the federal government has become a cancer, and we need to stop treating the symptoms. And I just list some of the symptoms up here. You could go on page and page after page about all the problems the federal government has caused. But what do I mean by not treating the symptoms anymore? Well, there's a lot of folks here, it, just to use examples, a lot of folks libertarian around the country that write great papers and have written great books about these symptoms, about the deficits and spending and the monetary policy and fiscal policy. And they, they're much smarter than me. They write better than I do, they're more articulate than me, and they've addressed these ad nauseum for the 60 years that I've been around on this planet. And they're clearly correct and they make very great points time after time after time for 60 years on all these topics, but what has all that done? And in my mind it's done zero because the government just keeps growing and growing and growing because it's in the government's interest to grow, the politicians, the political parties that control it. They're not turning back, no matter how right we are on all these points. And they know we're right. They really know we're right, but they don't care because they're profiting off doing what they're doing. So 
To me, we need to treat the cancer itself, which is the federal government, and stop focusing on the policies of the federal government. So what is the solution? How can we go from where we are today back to a society that embraces individual liberty, free capitalism, and a constitutionally limited government? <clears throat> well, let's go through the different options as I see them. Is it the main political parties? To me, it's obvious the Democratic or Republican parties do not support rolling back the government. They support the big unconstitutional government that exists today. And these their, their unethical politicians have so perverted the government that it's now the antithesis of what the Founding Fathers intended it to be. <clears throat> Both the parties are responsible for it and benefit from it. Therefore, they cannot be realistically ever expected to change it. So the answer here to me is no. <clears throat> and I've never had anybody come up to me and say, you know, the Democratic Party is the party that will restore individual liberty or embrace free market capitalism and, and constrain the government to the Constitution. <clears throat> but I have had some Republican friends of mine make those comments. I put one slide in here to go give a historical reminder to all my Republican friends of what the Republican Party's done the last 50 years. <clears throat> Which party took us off the gold standard so we could start running unlimited deficits? It was Richard Nixon and the Republican Party. Which party created the EPA? It was Richard Nixon and the Republican Party. OSHA, again, Richard Nixon and the Republican Party. <clears throat> Let me tell you, as somebody who's run businesses for 30 plus years, these are the two worst organizations you can deal with. I mean, I might give OSHA a little bit of credit that I think they have good intentions, but as the old saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And the EPA is just out of control power, mad organization. <clears throat> so which party implemented wage and price controls in the 70s? This is the Republican Party again. And uh, as an aside, I don't think we're too far away from somebody trying that again here soon. <clears throat> which party bailed out New York City? In 75, it was Gerald Ford and the Republican Party. Which party pushed through a prescription drug program that at the time was the biggest social program in a half a century? It's George W. Bush and the Republican Party. <clears throat> Which party set up a system of warrantless, warrantless searches and wiretaps on its citizens? It was the Republican Party. In 2008, who built out Wall Street? It was not Obama. It was George W. Bush and the Republicans. In 2020, who ran record deficits and printed money at a record pace during the government-induced economic downturn? It was Donald Trump and the Republican Party. So this is the history of the Republican Party. Nowhere in here do you see them at all embracing individual liberty or embracing capitalism or rolling back the government to adhere to the Constitution. And they're not going to. So next question, is it the Libertarian or a third party? And I say this as a member of the Libertarian Party who's voted Libertarian whenever candidates happen to be on the ballot. But, and I thought this could be the solution many years ago, but facts are facts. And the Libertarian Party's been around 50 years and has not gotten anybody elected at the federal level. So to me, it's not conceivable that they're going to get a president elected, 60 senators elected, which is what you need to accomplish anything and 218 members of Congress and roll back to deep state. So that's just not going to happen. So people talk all the time, well, could you have a new third party that's maybe more effective? Well, you probably could come up with maybe a third party that's more effective, but they're going to face the same issue, that they don't have any chance of getting the presidency, 60 Senate seats, and the majority in Congress. I mean, maybe you'd have a sliver of hope if we did ranked voting. But that's a whole other topic, and that's never going to happen because the parties that are in charge aren't going to allow that to change. So the answer here, unfortunately, to me is no. So is it the states through either nullification or secession? I've also thought this would be a good idea and was possible at one point. But at the end of the day, the states aren't the answers. They're controlled by the same political parties, the Republicans and Democrats, that the federal government's controlled by. And what state politicians want to do is become federal politicians. So they're just as bad. And even the best states have bloated, massive bureaucracies. So that's not going to solve the issue. So the answer here, unfortunately, is no. 
So the only remaining option left that I can see, and to paraphrase Sherlock Holmes here, <clears throat> when you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the answer. So the answer, as I see it, is the only solution is for the people to revolt and secede from the federal government themselves and form a new nation based on the original libertarian principles that this nation was founded on. And keep in mind, the source of the government's power is fear and dependence. They have all these welfare programs out there for everybody to take part in to get money from the federal government, not just individuals, but businesses. Then they write regulations to favor the businesses, and they have tax breaks to favor businesses. So everybody ends up getting dependent on the federal government, which is what they want, because then they scare everybody from losing that what they're getting from the federal government. And that's the fear. And then they'll also try to scare you. Oh, you're going to get old. You're going to get sick. You know, are you going to have health care? Well, rely on the government to provide it for you. You know, be scared of you know, terrorism. So allow us to search all of the emails and all of the cell phone records and all the credit card records to know everything about everybody and give us that power because you need to be scared of terrorism. And their biggest powers, their, their powers come from fear and dependence and it's the two biggest tools of a tyrant and there's no bigger tyrant than the federal government. And as someone once says, hope is not a strategy, we must take it upon ourselves to act. And so it leads to the question, can individuals secede from government? I think the answer is clearly yes. I put up three points here to sort of support my position. One, the revolution in 1776 was based in part on keeping what they had been granted in the Magna Carta, which was written in 1245. The founding fathers believed the British government moved so far from what they were promised in the Magna Carta that they fought back when the changes got too great. That same concept exists here today, that the federal and state governments have moved so far away from what we're guaranteed in the Constitution that another revolution is justified and necessary. <clears throat> Second, the, the revolution that formed this nation is based on the principle that the people had the right to change their government. That this is explicitly stated in the Declaration of Independence. It says that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. As that right existed then, it exists today. <clears throat> and finally, people from previous generations cannot bind future generations to servitude. Therefore, the fact one, organ one generation voted to become part of a union cannot force future generations to remain part of that perpetual agreement. Thus, generations need to make their own decisions whether or not they want to stay in the union. Ultimately, it's a case of self-determination. <clears throat> so, the Children of Liberty was formed to accomplish this. If we're free, then we have the right to our life, liberty, and property. And then we also, as a group, have the right to come together for the mutual enjoyment of our life, liberty, and property. And this right is ours, and no government can take it from us. Because if they can, then we're no longer individuals. We're property of the state. <clears throat> this is a quote that I saw a while back, and some of you may have seen it. I think it's a great description of the cycle of civilizations, and I'm just going to throw it up here for you to read instead of me reading it to you. Just keep in mind, it's written 200 years ago, and I, th I think it's cor correct in the way he describes things. <clears throat> I believe it's clear we are at the stages of apathy and, and, and dependency. And personally, I'd like to avoid bondage and go back with people of faith and courage to liberty. So that's the point of the organization. So what's the plan? Briefly and most importantly, we need to organize together into one group that will, and that's committed to the mission of creating a new nation based on liberty, free market capitalism, and a constitutionally limited government. <clears throat> The group is open. Anybody who wants to join us will be wide open and inclusive. Most importantly, though, it has to be nonviolent. I mean, I can't see founding a libertarian nation based on violence. And I don't think we'd succeed going the violent route. While most won't support us, what we need is a majority not to support government action against us. And violence and any talk of violence will give the government 
the ability to turn to people against the organization. The steps, again, first is organization building. After the organization's built up to what I would call a critical mass, then we can decide where, where the geography is. And keep in mind, it's an international organization. Like I said earlier, I think people outside the United States, this would strike more accord with because they've had to li a lot of them have had to live through terrible situations worse than what we're going through. <clears throat> so we can figure out the geography and where to form the nation later after we've built the organization up. Timing, I, I believe the time is right for a revolution with what I've said here before. And keep in mind, you don't need millions of people to pull this off. There's 20 nations in the world today that have less than 200,000 people in them. There's 7 billion people in the world. How many people do you think would rather live in a libertarian society than where they're at today? Probably a lot more than 200,000. And I get asked by people, do I think people would pick up and move together and, and do this? And I, I think, and I say, yeah, I said, Look at the people that are walking from Honduras and Guatemala all the way to Texas. And that's a pretty long walk. And most of them are doing it just to find a better life for themselves and their families. So yeah, I think people would be motivated to go move to a libertarian society. <clears throat> and also, I'd make the point that a truly libertarian society would attract both capital and labor. Capital always goes to where it's best treated. And what nation would treat capital better than a libertarian society that's based on embracing free market capitalism and, a, and, a, and a enforcing a constitutionally limited government. And once capital flows in, labor would flow in. And I think if this society can get created, it, very shortly afterwards, you'd have an economic boom to start off with. And the process of building an organization, I think, will take years, but it shouldn't take a decade. It really shouldn't. So circling back to where I was before, if people really want a constitutionally limited government, true free market capitalism and individual liberty, offer this idea of a revolution to accomplish this. It comes down to choice, everybody's individual choice if they want to join the organization and build the organization with the end goal of creating a new nation. <clears throat> so that's the end of the presentation. I thank you for being here and not leaving me alone in the room with the AV guys, the pretend folks are here. Um, I might just end on a couple of things. Um, look, I'm spending my own, own money and my own time to start this up. And I don't have an organization that has the money. I mean, I, I spent the money to be a sponsor here, and I'm proud to do so. Um, and I'm not, I don't have the money John Mackey does or Jeff Bezos or, or anybody that way, but I'm willing to start this thing up if people want to come along. Um, the other thing I'd say, just the little hashtag for this conference is, free to world. I'm not sure I agree with that concept because some people don't want to be free. I th I, my hashtag would be free yourself. And once you're free, join with other people that want to be free. Um, but if you have any questions or anything, I've got my table in there. I'll be at and I'll be at dinner tonight and probably the bar in between. So I'd love to engage with you on any questions you have or thoughts you have. So thank you. Sure, if you want, want to. I don't know how much time do we have. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Okay, good. Where, where are we having this country? <laughs> That's why I said it doesn't. Look, I mean, everybody, when I talk to, generally assumes it'd be part of, like, that some land is in part of the United States today. But it doesn't have to be. Like I said, it's internationalization. It could be part of land as part of another country today. It could be an island. It could be lots, it could be lots of places. But I don't think it's important to decide that on day one as much as it is to build an organization up that's got enough people to what I call a critical mass to then get together and decide where we'll locate it. <laughs> well, that, that, that may be true, but if you had, let's just make, make up, if you have 200,000 people and you all come together and live somewhere, are they gonna, are they gonna come in and slaughter 200,000 people? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so, I think it gets too big, I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, but, but, but you didn't have, I don't think the Civil War could have happened the way it happened if you'd had media and people could have seen the gore and everything that went on with everybody dying the way it was. I'm not sure if you had CNN 24-7 broadcast. I don't think people would have had the stomach for it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. No. Really yeah. 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 But, but but they had. You, you're right, but at the same time, if we're if we're doing it just based on wanting to be free, that's a different angle than what was what was happening on the, during the Civil War. That's what I used to think. I really did at one point. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, yeah, go here and then here. What are your views on like, New Hampshire? I know they, they only have a couple of libertarians elected, but they've used kind of a fusionist strategy yeah. to get people elected under the Republican banner. Mm -hmm. They've had, uh, at least what I've heard, some decent advances in like a gradualist approach. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, no, I'm familiar with it. I like the idea in a way, but I don't think they'll get to the point of having enough people move there. I mean, there's a million, two people, I think, is a population of New Hampshire. So to really do something, you, you need an overwhelming majority. So that's a, it's a long way to go to make that happen. Well, there are 25,000 right now. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was going to say, do you, know, you have any comment on uh, the projects like the Liberland, for instance, the project that's going on in Europe, the option basically very similar <coughs> Yeah. Free market, you know, or in a crypto based yeah. kind of folks who are trying to do this and they sort of, in, in many ways, achieve some sort of free market society, but it's, I mean, it's really more so like not in a small island yeah. in between Slovakia. Yeah. And that. Like, I mean, I mean, you know, that's sort of, in a way, it's like edging towards what you're trying to do. Yeah, no, you're right. It, it is, and um, I'm I'm familiar with it, but to say I've got any expertise with it wouldn't wouldn't be accurate. And I, I've, I'm familiar with it, and I know what they're doing, and it, it's it's a similar thing, but they're they've got certain challenges right now. I'm not sure you speak this, but I guess what are those challenges that you think? Well, I like I say, I'm not overly familiar with it, so I don't want to actually speak to the project in and of itself, but I, like I say, I think the point is, is if you can get a couple hundred thousand people around the world that buy into doing this and get them to move to an area where you're the overwhelming majority, I think it resolves a lot of issues. And it could be, it doesn't have to be a part of the United States. It could be part of another country. It could be an island. It could be wherever, but that's to be determined later once you've got the organization built. I would not get scared off from doing it from thinking that there's nowhere to do it at because you, you can you can take a piece of property I mean look if there's benefactors around the world too no, nothing says you you can't buy the property if 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 if, the, if you could work out a situation to do that if you ended up being able to find the right benefactors to do that and it doesn't have to be huge I mean we, we did have the Louisiana purchase at one point that bought land here yes Yep, no, that's exactly right. It's, you got to have the people, otherwise the rest of it doesn't really even matter. Yeah. So that was, by the way, for the room, that's a good book to look into, The Network State. Okay. I didn't know that book, so I will look at it. Sure. And uh, the second part of my question is Honduras is doing something called the ZEEE. -E. Yeah. Um, it's this little island, or it's a city-state called yep. Espera on the island of Roatan, just off the coast of Honduras. Um, are you familiar with that? I just got familiar at it here with with this conference. They have a, a table across from mine, and and uh, with it, yeah, I'm not sure they're quite going where 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 I'm going. But I mean, it's more a, a city level kind of thing rather than a whole than just going for the whole nation thing. But it could be a step in that process for them to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish. They're dealing with the local politicians at this point, trying to trying to make it happen. It's, it's a different approach and. If they can get to where they want to go, maybe the next step then becomes sort of a secession to have their own nation. Sure, I know that I think they're already subject to their own laws or rules, yep. and they yep. are somewhat in the jurisdiction of Honduras. Yeah, that could be a good way to go about it, where it's like yep. a legalistic process. 
yeah. a nation sees the economic benefit of allowing a, an independent city state to exist technically within their borders. Yeah, no, I, th I, I agree, and I'm just becoming aware of that, that idea myself, so that's neat. Charter cities. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Or? Okay. Well, thank you very much.